Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, and if you're new to my channel, I do cooking and baking from scratch, canning and dehydrating videos. If that sort of thing interests you, feel free to subscribe to the channel and make sure you're hitting that notification bell to make sure you are notified when I upload a new video. Today we are going to be baking, just in time for Thanksgiving, a taste at home recipe called Golden Honey Pan Rolls for your Thanksgiving dinner. I've made these several times and they're lovely and I'm going to share that recipe with you today. And this recipe is meant for the bread machine, but I adapted it for the stand mixer for anybody that doesn't own a bread machine. Bread machines usually have a certain order you put the ingredients in and put them in the order that a regular bread recipe would put them in the stand mixer. Because you just don't want your salt mixing with your yeast. And in a bread machine, your yeast is the last thing you put in, but most bread machine recipes have the salt going in first. That being said, this video is part of November, hosted by Linda at Tulu Creates. I'm going to leave a link to the playlist and go check out all the other great channels that are in this playlist and leave a comment to increase your chance of winning a prize at the end of the month on December 1st. Linda's going to be posting a video drawing a winning comment from any given video in this collaboration to win a prize, which might be baking related. So make sure you're leaving comments on this video and all the other great videos in this collaboration. With that being said, let's get to the baking, shall we? To make golden honey pan rolls, we're going to need two and one fourth teaspoons of dry active yeast, one cup of milk, one egg and a yolk, and they should be at room temperature, a half cup of canola oil, two tablespoons of honey, three and a half cups of bread flour, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. For a topping, we're gonna to use the egg white from the egg that we used, just the egg yolk, a third of a cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of melted butter and honey. To get started, we're gonna add our two and one fourth teaspoons of dry active yeast, our cup of warm milk. Then we're gonna dip our measuring spoon into the oil and shave off the excess. Then we're gonna add our canola oil to our bowl. Then we'll measure out our two tablespoons of honey. And just like that, the honey will fall out of the spoon. Then we'll add our egg and our egg yolk. Then we're gonna add our three and a half cups of flour. And if you've ever watched any of my other bread videos, I'm gonna tell you not to pack your flour into the measuring cup by scooping it in directly into your bag or your container. This is how you get bricks. So one cup, two cups, and three cups. And I'm just going to level it off. Then I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. Then with my dough hook, I'm just going to mix by hand. I find it to be faster if I do it this way than let the machine do it. And you never want to go past two. Thank you. 
If it's not pulling away from the sides after maybe two or three minutes, you just want to add maybe a quarter of a cup at a time, maybe a couple of teaspoons, just to get it to come together. You can always add more flour. You just can't take it out when you've added too much. So be very cautious on how much you add. And when you're kneading it, you can add a little bit more if it seems too sticky to you. But flour will weigh it down, so the less will make it more fluffy. And that's what we want. The KitchenAid, we're going to set a timer for 6 minutes. But if you have a Bosch, you can go 10 and you can shape from there. But we're going to stick with the KitchenAid since it's a smaller batch and just do 6 minutes of kneading. When your mixer is done kneading it, you want to knead it a few times just to see if it has that smooth gliding texture that I'm getting from the dough right now. If you can't do this easy of a knead, your dough needs more time to knead. It just, it's just a smooth rocking motion that I'm doing and pushing my palms towards the wall and rolling it back. Then we're going to shape it into a ball. And I just pulled the ball towards me and tuck my fingers underneath the shape of the dough just to get a tight seal. All right. So we're going to freeze the bowl after we cleaned it. Pop our bowl into the bowl. Freeze it and put a towel over it or saran wrap with the time on it that you need to go back to it and form balls. All right, today I left my dough rise in the oven with the light on and look how gorgeous that is. That is beautiful. So now we're gonna shape this into balls. make some rolls. All right, the original recipe claims that you'll get 24 rolls out of this. I've done this recipe twice now, and I only get 18 when I weigh two ounces for each dough ball. And it tells you to use two eight by eight pans. Well, I'm gonna use a seven and a half by 12 to get all 18 in here. I've greased my pans so far, and we're gonna turn the scale on. And so I just weigh out two ounces as much as I can to get uniform looking rolls, especially if I'm selling them. So I'm just gonna tuck it in on itself. Just pull the sides down. Then your surface should be clean and like you would a batch of Play-Doh, you're just gonna take your thumbs and just roll it around till you get a tight seal on the bottom. And you can pinch it shut. You can put a little bit of grease on the counter. And there you go, one nicely shaped ball. So I'm gonna Continue to weigh these out to two ounces. As close as I can get. And tuck and tuck and tuck and tuck. And just 
round and round from your index to your pinky. And I just then just pinch that shut your seam there and just put it in your pan there. is the easiest way to make a roll and don't be afraid to get it wrong before you get it right and your family's not going to criticize you because if they do they've never done it themselves and don't know how much a struggle it might be at the beginning. So don't worry about failing first. All right. So tuck it all in. And then round and round you go. to fit all 18 in this dish and we're gonna let these rise for another half hour or so and they'll be ready to go for the oven after that all right now we're gonna add our egg white and our sugar then we're gonna add our melted butter a tablespoon of honey I'm eyeballing it because I washed my tablespoon already and we're gonna just stir this together for the sugar to dissolve. We're just gonna drizzle the topping over the rolls. And you don't necessarily have to put the topping on. I've done this without the topping just because I just didn't want to add more sugar to our meal. But we're going to try it for you this time. All right, they're ready for the oven. We're going to be baking this in a 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes. I wish you were here to smell these rolls. Oh my. Don't they look gorgeous? I can't wait for my husband to try these. Yes, they look delicious. Well, do you need butter yet? No, they're very good. They're sweet. I think they taste like Chinese donuts at the buffet. Yeah. 
Yeah, probably. Somewhere. Thanks so very much for watching and stopping by the farmhouse today. If you enjoyed this video, may I suggest you watching this next? Thank you, and remember, God gave you a great day. Now go do something great with it.